and we're back guys i'm your host good energy tennis after dark we are in the studio and we are taking a look at the top eight ladies that's right this year's race to the finals what you did last year so far doesn't really matter right the top eight ladies now before we get into this list let's send a big congratulations to Igis Fiontech for what I feel what I think was her best championship performance ever even out of the grand slams the win streak everything I think this past championship the three-peat in Doha was her best title performance she had to dig deep and really stay mentally tough and just pull out a grueling win amazing i told you to take her to win it on the future anyone that took it enjoy guys you can uh, hit the super thanks and show some love now number eight on this list daria kasakina dasha dasha is nine and five on the year and she's made two championship appearances this year the first coming in the adelaide international where we saw her take out claire lou in the first round in straight sets Anna Kailinskaya in the round of 16 after going three sets. Now she did get a very, very lucky break uh, by <laughs> getting past Laura Sigmund and Jessica Pegula, which gave her a, uh, you know, a first class spot, you know, a gift, so to speak, into the Adelaide Championship where we saw her lose to Yelena Ostapenko in straight sets. But she also made the Abu Dhabi Championship where we saw her take out Diane Perry in the first round that went three sets. Ashlyn Kruger, who's a upcoming American talent. She's very big, powerful from the baseline, got a very strong serve. She beat her in straight sets. Serana Kersea in the quarterfinal in, in straight sets. Beatrice Haddad went three. And remember, guys, I covered that match and I said, I don't know how Beatrice has ever defeated Dasha Kina because it's like Dasha just literally controlled that match with her shot making ability, just her ability to get balls back, her amazing footwork and just penetrating that huge defensive wall that Beatrice has of her own and displaying her own defensive skills. And yeah, Dasha won that in three sets and she made it to the championship match where Elena Rabak and it was just too much for her, right? Too strong, too powerful. She lost that in straight sets. And of course, in Doha, she lost to Anastasia Pavyuchenkova in straight sets in the first round. But she's nine and five on the year and it's a good start for her. It's a good start. And mentioning Anastasia Pavyuchenkova, she's ranked ninth on this list and Barbara Kachikova is ranked 10th. However, the cutoff point is eight. The ninth and 10th spots respectively serve as alternates or injury replacements. But listen, aside from Mokova and Maria Sacri taking her spot in Cancun, we haven't seen many injury replacements. I mean, we did see Osaka pull out um, the last time she made the WTA finals. So that was probably the most recent uh, withdrawal. Uh, aside from Mokova. But Dasha's number eight on this list. And the question is, can she hold? Um, personally, I don't think she's going to hold on to this spot, to be honest with you. But right now, she's number eight. And let's take a look at number seven. Number seven is probably the most unlikely to appear on this list so early. Dayana Yastremska from the hard-hitting Ukraine. She's 23 years old, and right now she's ranked 29th in the world. Not too far from her high of 21 in the year 2019, where she just had an amazing season. And I'm going to say it again. I've said this several times in the past. I think the Anti-Doping Association owes her millions of dollars. Now, I'm not sure if they reached a settlement behind closed doors, but... If they did not, they certainly need to pay Diana millions of dollars for the false tests that ruined her career. I mean, she's still young, so luckily it appears she's back on track and able to recover somewhat. But they literally took and a main household name on tour coming from the juniors where she made the Wimbledon Junior Slam, where she lost to her very good friend Anastasia Patapova. But... 
She's 11 and three on the year. We saw her rack up most of these points, right? List, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. If the WTA final started today, Marquetta would not be there. And I say it all the time. If Marquetta loses the first set, she seems uninterested, right? That mental toughness to hang in there and fight back. I don't think she has it. She took out Vivara in the second round. Now that's a match I can see her winning, right? She's a lot more experienced than Vivara. She's been in a lot bigger games, but Vivara gets balls back. She's a good shot maker. But when Dayana is firing on all cylinders, there's not many people that can return her shots. Emma Navarro in the third round, probably another unlikely win since Emma's, she's just pretty disciplined, right? She's solid and she's pretty sound mentally she doesn't really beat herself you know she's one of those players that she plays safe tennis you know much like jessica pegula you know pegula made it clear that she's not out there trying to hit through opponents or just blast them off of the court she pretty much goes with the flow and she takes the opportunities that present themselves and emma navarro is much like that but that was an unlikely win, but she did get the victory, which propelled her to the round of 16, where she beat another unlikely opponent, Victoria Azarenka, in straight sets. Victoria looked very sloppy in that match, and that would uh, propel Dayana to the quarterfinal, where she took out Linda Noskova. Now, that's a match that I said Dayana should win as the huge underdog, and she beat Linda in straight sets. Now, Linda's a former top ranked junior, a junior Grand Slam, but Dayana had a really good junior career as well. And her professional career started off really, really good. So although Linda is probably a little bit more popular in the eyes of tennis fans right now, probably not a match where Linda should have been a huge favorite. As I said, Dayana should beat her and she did. That led to a semifinal showdown with Queenwin, who is playing amazing tennis. However, Dayana would lose that in straight sets 6-4, 6-4, but it was a very competitive match. And Dayana's number seven on this list. Do I think she can hold on to this spot? Unfortunately, I do not think so. I do not think she will make the WTA finals. We do not know where they will be held. As of now, the talks of holding them in Saudi Arabia, it's still going on. And me personally, I think it will probably be in China somewhere. That's just my own personal opinion. China has the money and they have the infrastructure to hold the WTA finals like they have in the past. And the reality here is a lot of talks have been, you know, or should I say a lot of talks have started around possibly a fifth Grand Slam. I don't think it's possible. I think the schedule as it is now, is just so grueling. I mean, for crying out loud, there's not even enough time to have a grass master tournament. So I don't think that a fifth Grand Slam is even possible. I think a lot of the ladies, especially the top stars, they're all complaining about the schedule as it is now. They are not happy with the WTA. They feel like they're underpaid and they're just not treated. They're treated like property. So if you're not familiar, yes, a lot of the top ladies, they have beef with the WTA and Elena Rabakina is right there with a huge voice. So um, no, I don't think there will be a fifth Grand Slam added to the schedule, but if they do, it will for sure be in China. China has the infrastructure to hold it right away. Um, but no, I don't think Dayana will stay on this list. Her style makes for an exciting match, but it's just too, it's too sloppy to be honest with you. And I don't think that's going to give her longevity to stay in this race. Number six on this list. If the WTA final started today, she would be in them for the third time as a teenager. That's if they started today. Corey Coco Golf, she's so popular that her nickname shows up in these online tennis sites. She's the only person where you can search her nickname and she'll pop up. That's how popular she is. Corey Golf, she is amazing. Now she's 10 and 2 on the year. Her only two losses came actually back to back at the Australian Open in the semifinal against Arena Sabalenka, where she was up 6-5, 30 love and blew it. She was even up 4-3 in the second set, love 30 on the serve of Sabalenka and blew it. 
And she said it herself in the post-match interview that she had her chances. It really came down to her decision making. And she lost in Doha to Katarina Sinyakova. And again, I told people that's not a loss I would really look into much. You know, when you're playing someone that you've dominated, you know, going into that match, they played six times. Coco won five of them. A lot of times you play down to your opponent. And before you know it, you know, you're, what, tennis is the type of sport where before you know it, if you get sloppy, the match is over. You get broken, your opponent holds, the match is over. It's, it's really like that. And if you're not familiar, most professional players on tour, they hold, you know, at least about 65 to 70% of the time. So if you have a bad service game and get broken, your opponent holds, the match is over. You know, especially if you lose the first set, start off slow and you don't 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 have a good rhythm it happens but coco is one of the few players on tour that is an amazing defender and she breaks opponents a lot that's right coco's winning 55 percent of her return games so do i think coco will stay on this list absolutely okay and uh she was number five Iga winning doha bumped her up to six and that took Iga from rank ninth where if the final started last week, Iga would not be in them. So I told you guys, Iga's, Iga or Coco will win Doha. I said heads them both for the guaranteed free money. And yeah, I got a message. So someone did take my advice. So congratulations. And of course, I did the same thing myself and it won. It paid off. Uh, Coco is the only person so far on this list to have won a championship. And that was Auckland, where we saw her take out Claire Liu in the first round, Brenda Favertova in the round of 16, Vavara in the quarterfinal, Emma Navarro in the semifinal, and Svitolina in the championship match, coming back down a set. And again, Coco on the season, she's 10 and 2, coming off of a 51 win season, her most wins as a professional. Coco's getting better and stronger. Uh, once Brad Gilbert and her work out that new serve, uh, I think she's going to dominate. So will Coco make the finals this year? Yes, she will, without a doubt. She's too good. Every slam or master event, she's going to be right there. And speaking of master events, can she win Abu Dhabi? Stay tuned. I will come out with some good predictions for Abu Dhabi very shortly. So, Coco Golf, number six on this list. Such an amazing athlete. She's super duper talented. And she's only 19. I can go on and on about Coco and how amazing she is, so I'm going to stop right here. <laughs> Number five on this list, if the WTA finals started today, Yelena Ostapenko, ladies and gentlemen. She's 14 and three on the year, and she is the first two-time champion this year to appear on this list. And she's won two WTA 500 level events. Now, she started off Brisbane by making it to the quarterfinal before being eliminated by Victoria Azarenka. She won the Adelaide International by taking out Serana Kirste in the first round, that went three. Carolyn Garcia in the round of 16, that went three. Marta Kashuk, she defeated in straight sets. Ekaterina Alexandrova, she also defeated in straight sets. And in the championship match, she took out Daria Kasakina in straight sets in the final 6-3, 6-2. At the Australian Open, she made it to the third round, which is still impressive before being ousted by Victoria Azarenka. But she won the upper lengths, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, after losing that tournament four years ago to Corey Coco Golf. Corey won her first championship there. Amazing, right? And she even threw a little shade, even though we know her and Coco are good friends. She threw a little shade at Coco by saying, the last time I was here, I lost this tournament, but I think the, tr the trophy looks much nicer this year. <laughs> Unbelievable. In the first round, she beat Clara Tawson in straight. Uh, actually, no, that went three. I, yeah, that did go three sets. In the quarterfinal, she beat Jody Burge. In the semifinal, she, she took out Anastasia Pavlyuchenkova. And in the final, she beat Ekaterina Alexandrova in straight sets. Elena Asipenko, will she remain on this list? I think she will, because not only is she having a good season, uh, she, mentally she seems to be in a good place, but she's got the power. She's got the power to go deep in any of the very important draws, the slams or the master events. She's that good. And the fact that she's already won two championships, she normally heats up mid-season around grass. I think she'll probably win at least two more titles this year. 
and that should be enough to keep her in this race. So I do think she'll stay in this race, but I don't think, I just, I just don't think she'll stay at fifth. I think she'll probably either squeak in at seventh or eighth. Yelena Asipenko, number five, if the WTA final started today. Number four on this list, if the WTA finals were to start today, would be Kenwin Jung. Now listen guys, she's nine and three on the year, 42 win season last year. She made it to the elite championship match against Beecher Sadad in China, her home country, where she put up a fight. She was down big, but battled back. And she, she brought that energy into this season, right? We saw her start off the United Cup doing pretty good, taking out Marquetta and Olga Denlovic before losing to Iga in straight sets. And she went ham at the Australian Open, guys. The first round, she took out Aslan Kruger, Katie Bolter, which was, which was a very, very tough matchup. Uh, Waifan Wang in the third round. And look, Waifan is very, very good. Uh, I think she, and look, I did say I think she's kind of an itf player but she has the skills to do well on the main tour and she took queen win deep in that match a three set thriller ocean Dotton in the round of 16 again that was another pick i gave you back-to-back -back picks um well, actually i told you to take her against bolter wong and uh ocean easy easy uh picks there good value as well but she gave Ocean a bagel in the first set of that round of 16 match. Anna Kylinskaya, the quarterfinal, another pick. I told you to take Queen Win, and I also told you to take Queen Win in the semifinal against Dayana Yastrzemka. So we pretty much rolled her into the final. She had a she had a favorable draw, right? But in the semifinal match, I told you to go with Sabalenka. So we pretty much rolled Queen Win to the championship match where um, we faded her big in the in the final. Now, do I think Queen Wynn's going to stay on this list? This is the question now. She's got a new coach by the name of Rebus. Rebus has led two top 10 ladies to Grand Slam finals within the last six months. An amazing coach. I think he's got great energy. That energy is contagious. It creates a spillover effect for it for his players and it gets them through tough situations. But this is a question. Can Queen Wynn make the finals this year? And again, I think it will most likely be held in China somewhere. That's just my personal opinion, but that's yet to be determined. She's got 1,560 points. To make the WTA finals, she's going to need at least 4,000 points to be right in that mix of just barely squeaking in. She's going to have to make at least another one or two semifinal appearances at one of these Grand Slams, and she's going to have to win a title somewhere. I don't know if she can do it i'm on the fence but if she does squeak in i think it's going to be just like Ostapenko around seventh or eighth she can do it it's possible and i'm definitely more confident that she can make it versus someone like dasha because queen win has a better serve she's able to hold more than dasha so again i think queen win can squeak in but it's going to be tough and it's going to be one of those last couple spots. Number four, if the WTA final started today, Queen win. Number three on this list, a huge turnaround, a difference one week can make, Iga Swiatek from Warsaw, Poland. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right, a week ago, if the WTA final started, Iga, the reigning champion, would not be in them. The world's rank number one as well. That would be amazing. And that would be disappointing. Um, coming off of a 69 win season, she won 70 matches the previous year, 11 and one this year. That's right guys, she's only lost one match this year. Of course, we count the United Cup victories there as they now award points for playing in the United Cup, which they should because it's like you're missing the season uh, even though they're paying you very well and treating you well. Uh, look, she got bounced out of the Australian Open in the third round to Linda Noskova. Now, I told you guys after that match with Danielle Collins that she should have lost. Danielle was up a set and a break. But the reality here is I say it all the time and I said it here. 
when a professional athlete wins a match they should have lost, they normally lose the next match. And we saw Linda take her out in three. But she came right back in Doha. I told you guys to take her on the future. And she took out Serana Kerstay in the first round in straight sets, two breadsticks. Ekaterina in straight sets, a breadstick in the first set. And Vika in straight sets, a bagel in the second set. Pliskova was a walkover, and I think we just witnessed Iga play her greatest championship match of all time, taking out the hard-hitting Elena Rybakina. Iga was on the verge of getting an injury. She was just backed up behind that baseline. She was scrambling to return balls. We saw her defend at one of the highest levels I've ever seen. We've seen her mentally tough and she just kept fighting and fighting and she did not want to lose that match. That was an instant classic and it's probably the best match of the year so far. Number three on this list, Iga Swiatek. Will she make the WTA finals? Of course she will. She's too good. She's too consistent. Uh, I do think she'll be right there in the mix. And I will, I think, look, right now she's number three. I think she'll probably be either two or three. I don't know if she gets the number one seed this year because I think she might run into injuries with that knee later on this season. I do. So I think she'll stay probably, you know, around two or three, but I don't know if she gets the number one spot in this year's race to the finals because I think the knee will give her problems because look, the tour is getting more physical, more stronger and they're game planning for Iga. I mean, I've put out a ton of videos on, on how you beat Iga. And I think a lot of the coaches are catching on. And um, I just I do think injuries might be a problem this year for Iga. I mean, if you start the year off with injury pain with this schedule, it, it's not going to get any easier because your body needs rest. So um, I think she'll finish around number two or three in the race to the finals. Iga's Fiantek the amazing Iga Swiatek. And number two on this list, if the WTA Finals started today, Elena Rabakina. She has 1,828 points so far this year. 15 and three, she is playing a lot of matches, ladies and gentlemen. We've seen her make three championship appearances this year. The first coming in Brisbane, where she took out Olivia Gadecki in the first round in straight sets. Elise Mertens in the round of 16. Well, she actually had a bye in the first round, so technically the match against Olivia was the second round. But she gave her a breadstick in the second set. She gave Elise Mertens a breadstick and a bagel in the round of 16. Patapova got a breadstick before she retired in the quarterfinal. Linda Noskova straight set 6-3, 6-2. Sabalenka a bagel in the first set of the championship match. And she beat her in straight sets. Now, she did struggle at the Adelaide in the Australian Open, losing in her second matches in those tournaments. But she came back at Abu Dhabi making the championship match where she took out Danielle Collins in her first round matchup. Three sets it went, but she showed uh, mental toughness and she hung in there and got the victory. Christina Buxa was a blowout in the quarterfinal. She went three with Ludmilla battling hard in that match, but she did win. And she destroyed Dasha in the championship match. And of course, we just saw her make it to the Doha championship where she lost to Iga. But she took out Lin Zhu in straight sets, Emma Navarro in three, Layla Fernandez in the quarterfinal in straight sets, Anastasia Pavlyuchenkova in straight sets in the semifinal. And she played tough against Iga. Now, Elena Rabakin is number two on this list. I think she'll probably finish anywhere from between two and four. Uh, I do think Coco is going to make a deep run towards the second and third quarter. And Coco will probably finish inside the top three. I think either one or two. And I think uh, Rabakin is going to be anywhere from between... Most likely, I think Rabakin will probably fall to rank third. That's if she can hold up. Uh, she she looks pretty banged up right now. That match with Eagle was very physical. We have Abu Dhabi coming. We have the Sunshine Double. And don't forget about the Clay Masters, the French Open, Wimbledon. We have the Olympics. There's a lot of big tournaments coming. And the problem with Rebecca is she had the shoulder issues last year. And she's pretty frail. She's tall and she's pretty frail. So... We're going to see if her body can hold up because it's going to be a grueling schedule. But I do have her making the finals again. Uh, I think she'll be anywhere most likely between the third, fourth or fifth seed. But the real question is, can she win it all? Right. 
Number one on this list, if the WTA finals were to start today with 2,390 points, Arena Sabalenka from Belarus, 25 years old. She's the world's ranked number two, but probably not for long. She's 11 and one on the year. Amazing coming off of a 59 win season. She's played two tournaments this year. Brisbane, she made the championship match where she took out Bronzetti in the second round. Gave her a bagel in the second set. Lin Zhu in the round of 16 gave her a bagel in the second set. Dash in the quarterfinal, 6 1, 6 4, a breadstick. Azarenka, 6 2, 6 4. Vika, don't talk trash about upcoming players because Sabalenka heard that interview, and ever since you de destroyed her in that interview, she has destroyed you on the court. She lost in the championship match to Rabakina where she had a bagel in the first set but i don't know she was too happy in that match she she didn't seem herself um now the australian open she took out sadell giving her a bagel in the first round brenda favertova 6362 double bagel to serenko in the third round in the round of 16 amanda anasimova 6362 barbora kachikova 6263 corey coco golf after being down 65 love 30 came back won the first set, 6-4 in the second set, and Queen wins, 6-3, six, 6-2. Six, will Sabalenka make the WTA Finals? Of course she will. Um, I think she's going to be right in the mix of making the semifinal in every single Master and Slam event. She's that powerful as long as she stays healthy, which I don't see any signs of her body breaking down because she's so physical. She's just easily overpowers opponents she plays and she doesn't really have to defend much because her best defense is her offense but i think the real question is will sabalenka win the wta finals this year and she's going to be right in the mix um i think it's probably going to be either coco or arena that wins the finals uh, i don't think iga's body is going to hold up I, I just don't i mean she's having knee problems early I, I don't think her body holds up this year and i don't i don't think elena rabakina's is going to hold up either so i think sabalenka is probably going to be the number one seed uh in the wta finals either her or coco it's going to come down to to really health i think with the olympics this year that's going to be another grueling schedule i mean that's that's like another slam in there it's going to be so competitive uh but i do think sabalenka makes the finals in the or the only question is will she win it all Tennis After Dark, I'm your host, Good Energy. Show some love for these amazing ladies. Thanks for listening to the video. Hit the like button. Comment below who do you think is going to win it all. Hit the super thanks. Show some love. Thank you for listening. We'll be right back.